So one of my favorite stories that they didn't show on Survivor was on Survivor Pro Islands when Burton is voted back in the game from the Outcast twist. He comes back in the middle of the night. We, we'd already decided it doesn't matter who comes back. We'll talk to him in the morning. So Burton shows up, and we're all in bed underneath the shelter. And he goes, uh, hey, it's me, Burton. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I think Sandra's the first to go, uh, okay, well, we're asleep, so just go to bed. <laughs> and he's like, well, where am I sleeping? And I, I think it was Rupert. He was like, right over there. And, and, and he was like, right beside the snake that voted me out. And I go, how's it going, Burton? <laughs> so that, that right there was my favorite moment that was not shown on the show and made me so happy to be referred to as the snake that voted Bur Burton out. And then we became best friends. Previously on the top 100 greatest survivors. Devin was a very, very likable guy. Well, Wu's loyalty and his integrity was key. But you go, a wicked, great, sharp tongue. Christian, Christian's great. It was interesting playing with C with Jervis in my second season. You want to be on Danielle's side. Let me put it that way. But at the end of the day, she got some game. Mama got some game. So Zeke, I think, totally embodies what a new school player is. With Keith Nail, what you see is what you get. I love seeing him, and he's just like the sweetest, kindest person. And now, the countdown to number one continues. Ben Ball. La la la. While you guys are sleeping, oh what's that gosh. saying? The early bird gets a worm? Ben does not count. Ben does not count. Ben does not count. 14th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury. Mike, need to bring me your torch? The greatest game on television, and these, its most respected players. Who is your number one? The number one spot. Number one spot. Who deserves to be number one? It's impossible to pick one that's the greatest survivor of all time. It's time to celebrate the castaways, the legends. The number one survivor of all time has to be. This is the top. 100 Greatest Survivors. So I gotta go back to my three C's, the Cool Common Collective because I can't be a hothead in this game because that will send me out too. And that's who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a hothead. What I will say about Rodney, um, Rodney went into our game not knowing how to play Survivor at all. Um, he didn't even really know, you know, like what the game was about, honestly. I think it, it, he would be very upfront and, and honest and say that as well. Uh, the thing that Rodney does have, Rodney will never give up. Um, Rodney will always, always, always be looking for an angle in, in order to be able to put himself on top or in the decision-making uh, position. We're all out here doing yeah. the same damn thing with the same damn people, but you wonder who the people gonna be. <laughs> Jeff, I think I'm on the chopping block tonight. <laughs> I don't remember my name come up five or six times tonight, Jeff. It could be me gone. Oh, um, will you please? So, um, yeah, I did enjoy playing with Rodney. Um, it's funny because, you know, when I first met him, we weren't allowed to talk, right? We were just kind of in, in pregame. And uh, I knew right away that we would get along. I figured he had a Boston shirt on, and even though I'm from New York and he's from Boston, I let that go, you know? I didn't put that, uh, <laughs> bring that, that rivalry to the game. 
Um, we, we always kid about that now, but uh, yeah, he was, he was wild and crazy, you know, like he, he was just uh, loud and um, he had a lot of energy. Um, he was always hungry. Uh, it was pretty funny, but he was, it was fun to play with him actually. I haven't been able to leave this beach once. I didn't go on one reward, I'm pissed. It's miserable, I'm not eating enough food. I'm shaking, I got an itchy bed. I haven't showered, my nails are nasty. Did I say I'm miserable? Everybody's had a break, but I've just been locked in my cell 24 seven, not be able to burst out and have some fun. I need some Rodney time. Hey there, Once Upon an Island here, and how can we ever forget Rodney's birthday? That will go down as a classic moment in Survivor. Our next player is a bit controversial, yet they're tied for the most votes for any female winner in the history of Survivor. Our season, since it was that pivotal season of where the game changed, a lot of people said that we were a bitter jury. I, I personally, it wasn't a bitterness about it. It was just more of the way that I appreciated the way that Natalie played. I'm telling you, y'all, he is gonna wreak havoc. Kelly and Laura, I just basically let them know that Eric needed to go now. We have four people, they have eight. It's not a big deal if they lose one. I'm definitely putting my faith in Laura and Kelly, and I'm just gonna hope that it works. Yeah, I know, but I don't think you're talking to do you think you did. Eric, Trump has spoken. So for me, it was personally, it was a matter of like, wow, Natalie, this blonde hair, blue eyed girl, pageant girl, right, gets to the end, figured out a way to do what she needed to do to get to the end. And, um, to be honest with you, and I am sure that Russell probably knows this, we were all voting for Mick. We were going into that tribal council voting for Mick. And every single one of us just wanted Mick to say, tell me something that you did to get to the end. And he couldn't. And Natalie just gave a drop bomb speech at the end that laid out, here's my gameplay, and went down the line and personally named every single one of us on the jury and a family member and something about us personally that showed us that she played a social game and that she knows she'd say, Laura, your husband, Dan, and name my kids. And it was like, okay, she played a social game. And um, that's, that's why she won. This is the hardest thing I've ever done mentally, physically, emotionally. This experience has been very humbling for me. And without each and every one of you, I would not be sitting here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let me be devil's advocate. Yes, Russell Hans is gonna be devil's advocate to the person that actually beat me in Survivor. When we went to the merge, uh, Natalie's best move was to flip. Her best move was to go with the other girls because we went to the merge eight to four, but she didn't. And I always gave Natalie the credit that she deserved to stay in faithful to our alliance. It was four, four against eight. She didn't want to flip. She decided to stay strong, keep hope alive, and stay with the little three votes that she had and four including her. So by doing that gets my respect for Natalie uh, being honorable, being honest to her alliance and staying strong with us. And Natalie was way out of her element. I know you go in the woods, you're doing all these things. You don't have a toilet. You don't have toilet paper. You don't have a toothbrush. She's a girly girl, guys. She is, when when you think of that type of person that would not ever do this, it would be Natalie. And she never complained. Natalie never cried. I didn't see her cry once. I never seen her complain. I seen her sleeping in the water once. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, like she's a strong person. So not only is Natalie smart by staying with her solid alliance and staying behind the guy that was gonna take all the targets, she was super strong when it comes to her person, who she was. She wasn't a weak person at all. 
you would say that you were probably the least deserving of the title of Soul Survivor. But maybe, just maybe, in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement, maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. You got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congratulations. The winner of Survivor Samoa. While Natalie White played a game that could be hailed as the ultimate meat shield strategy, our next player is someone who never hid behind a meat shield because they were always leading the pack on their tribe in their first season. And yet, they were actually voted out on this same exact day in their first season as they were on their second season. If you were going to make your own top 100 survivor list, uh, who do you think you would put up there in the uh, number one spot? Oh, God. Uh... Well, I got to go with my boy, my hometown, right? The home team, Matt Zandy Savage. Yeah, I mean, uh, second time's a charm. I, you know, first time, I think it was something was brand new. Um, he played a wonderful game the first time. Um, and the second time, you know, I, I think he got shafted, but he was, it was putting together something quite magical, I thought. Uh, I was pushing for him. Unfortunately, he got the uh, short end of the stick, but uh, he's a smart guy. That sucked, any way you look at it. We lost by about a foot. We learn from it. We move on, and we kick their butt the next time, and we remember how cocky they were when they won. All right? You ladies saw what we saw. What did you see? I saw our friend Ryan, who's back at the camp just quit about a third of the way in. And every time I looked over and said, Oh yeah, Andrew Savage, yeah, to get cream of the crop. Was waiting to get a chance to write your name down, Andrew. And you know, what a lot of people don't understand is before every challenge, you know, Jeff goes, come on in, guys. And, uh, you know, he, he does, you know, today's challenge, blah, 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 blah. And then afterwards, there, you know, there's a pause. He says everything again slowly. And then he picks two representatives. Uh, he, he picks one representative from each tribe to do a walkthrough of the challenge. And that person was always Savage and myself. And so Savage and I had plenty of one-on-one -on -one time in which we <laughs> explained our disdain for one another. And, uh, and and then you know later in the game for Savage to hear that that uh, that we well when I revealed to Savage that it was that it was actually Drake through that challenge you know to kind of trim the fat from from the Drake tribe I, he was incensed to no end so I mean like that we if he didn't like me before we were mortal mortal enemies after that and uh, but the crazy thing is you know fast forward to the reunion show. And, you know, and, and, and there's, you know, no love lost between the two of us. And, you know, and Savage says there is just like, you know, I consider it an honor to play, to have played the game with the greatest survivor uh, player of all time, being myself. And I started, I was a Shangri-La. I was top dog with abundance of seafood. Now I am in literally a survivor ghetto. There's nothing here. While Andrew Savage got a second shot on Survivor Cambodia, this next player on the list was unfortunately not voted into that season. Her original game, though, fell victim to other players' unwillingness to flip on the Majority Alliance, Classic Survivor, despite all of her attempts to show them why they should. I even made a video about her called The Last Sambaru. We thought we'd get a fire faster than we, of course, than we did. As hard as we were working, we just couldn't seem to get it. And then, of course, we were tired from the, from the long day. It was getting dark, and we still kept trying and trying, even when it was dark, to try to get the fire going. And that was, you know, a big frustration. This was a hard vote for me to cast. I think you're a wonderful, fascinating person but your leadership strength and skills make me a little nervous for down the road, so I'm giving you my vote. Somebody around here 
is claiming to be something that they're not. Of course, they figured that Clarence had voted him. They had to figure out who the other person was. It was me. I mean, I, I did it. I'm sick that I did it now, but like I said, I didn't think it'd be such an ordeal. You know, I want, I want you to know that I have, I have no suspicion at all as far as you're concerned. And I'm just going to let this thing go now that whoever it is is probably going to hang themselves. You know, playing with T-Bird in Africa was lovely. She is an absolutely lovely person. Um, I adore her to this day. I actually, I, I talked to her on the phone today. Um, and, and, and I knew, but I knew that when we were out there together, even though I didn't know that she cast that one vote against me that I thought might have been Kelly Goldsmith, um, I knew that T-Bird was really smart and really shrewd and really, really lovable. Um, and she would be a, a, a pretty, um, a, an unfortunate person to have next to me in final two. So I, I knew that I, I didn't, I couldn't keep her around um, any longer than we did because she would have been a really dangerous partner to have in final two. T-Bird is a lovable person and player and will forever be remembered for her infinitely positive attitude. The next player on this list did not first appear on Survivor. In fact, they first won Big Brother with a strategy that completely bulldozed the competition. They brought this great mind into their first Survivor season where they tried to flip the game on its head, but was held back by an unfortunate turn of events at the rock draw. He always had a plan. Like if it goes this way, I'm gonna do this. He was very quick to move to different places. Whenever anybody asks me who are the best people you've ever played with, Hayden is on my list. You know, they say a rolling stone gathers no moss, but doubly so if that stone's name is Hayden. Big Brother, I mean, it is survivor in a house. So as far as training or preparation, I'm gonna be more prepared than anybody else that hasn't already played this game. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? My name is Perdium, and I am really glad that I get to talk about Hayden Moss, the loved one of Cat on season 27, Blood vs. Water. Hayden was already a former player originating from Big Brother 12, so Survivor wasn't his first foray into competitive reality television, but even without this experience, Hayden is a bona fide triple threat. As someone whose first season of Big Brother was season 12, I have seen this guy play the game 24 seven, and I was equally impressed by his level of cool, calm and collected control while on the beaches. His duo with Caleb made them the drivers for the pre-swap and it's really only once he gets too comfortable with Tyson's group that his game gets sabotaged. He waited a little bit too long to pull that trigger, but let me just remind you in case you forgot, he did convince Sierra to flip at the final six, the first rock draw since season four, and had the rocks gone his way, had Tyson been rocked out of the game, I think there is a good chance Hayden wins this season. Which immediately means, Sierra, you're number four. If you came on this side, there is no four, five, or six. There's one, two, and three, or one, two, and three, however you frame it. That's incorrect. What do you mean that's incorrect? Sierra, you can be number four all day long. You can come with us. We can draw rocks. Sierra. And that's a big move. Don't hate the players, homie. Hate the game. This isn't Big Brother. It's Survivor. We do things different here. You're about to get a lesson in how to play the game. Monica, we're tied. I mean, let's just be real. For only playing one time and rather low key, Hayden sparked one of the biggest moves we have ever seen. And I don't know about you guys, but if you asked me, I say it's about time he gets that second chance. I know he needs to play again because he is one of those players who is so well-rounded. He's not only a challenge threat and like a social threat, he is so strategic and smart in what he's doing. And um, he, he is definitely one of the best players to, to literally ever play the game. And I wish that they would get him out there again to play another season. He's one of the best. When I watched him on Big Brother, you know, after I knew him, I wanted to go back and just watch his season because he's somebody that really does you know, care about other people's voice more than his own. He's a great listener. He's a really strong competitor. Of course, I would say that he should play again because, you know, my first season, I left at final seven, and I think he left at final seven on Blood versus Water, so you still have that, like, wait a second, I'm not done. 
you know, I can't say if you'd actually want to do it again, but I can say that the fans would be interested to watch him play. Hayden Moss is a player we desperately want to see play again. Our next player on this list was also someone a lot of us wanted to see play again, and we did. His run on Cambodia was ultimately cut short due to a family emergency, but his game on Panama was oh so close to winning it all. We're stoked, we're older guys, and we're into this, and we're doing the Boy Scout thing right now. That's the best smelling stinking fire I've seen in a long time. <laughs> when people come over here, if they do, they're gonna see a roaring fire, and they're gonna see some shrimp on the bobby. First season that I played it was I don't know how many years 14 15 years now um, and so I have the benefit of 2020 vision and hindsight um, at the time I was young I was 24 years old and um, Terry was a beast he was a challenge beast and he was a force and so I think you know as like a young bull kind of going up against the old bull there was this uh, this feeling that I needed to challenge him um and i can't speak for terry uh but uh maybe he felt there was like a need to quiet the young bull so it was it was confrontational on the island um but terry is an amazing human being and um he he has a very good heart and i i have nothing but respect for terry at the time i did not um and you know you couple that with starvation and you couple that with um lack of nutrition and dehydration and, and, and just how isolating the game is at an emotional, spiritual level. Um, and, and uh, you know, what can possibly be uh, treated in, in, in kind of more uh, humane ways becomes confrontational. And, and that's what happened for, for Terry and I, but I, we have a great relationship now. He's a, he's a wonderful guy, but man, he was a beast out there. And um, he was very strong. And I don't, I don't just mean strong physically, like he had a very strong center um, and, uh, yeah, it just, he is a great, great competitor. It's been a pleasure. It's been a journey with you, man. Battle. Terry Dietz was a complete challenge beast on Panama. Our next player won his season by doing the exact opposite. He didn't win any immunities despite looking like someone that would win a lot of immunities and he just played a dominant social game that showed us that no matter how far along we get into the evolution of Survivor, the social game is still the most important aspect. I think Tommy played one of the best social games that we've ever seen. I mean we saw someone who never went to Island of the Idols, never even found an idol, never played any advantage, and completely won the game because every single person thought that they were his number one. I'm Tommy Sheehan from Long Island, New York, and I'm a fourth grade teacher. Oh, yeah, so I teach the little guys. As a fourth grade teacher, my job is to make sure everyone feels comfortable around me. In this game, I'm doing the same thing. My favorite teacher uh, of all time was my fourth grade teacher. Really, mine too. That's My fourth grade teacher literally changed my life. I'm married when you're 26? Yeah. I'm 26. I've been dating my girlfriend for three years. Awesome. How do you feel? Uh, I'm going to propose this year, yeah. You yeah. are? Yeah, I bought the ring. I got all that. You well, did? Oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh. Let me first start by saying, I'm like, we're really close nowadays. And he's like such a good guy, like has such a good heart, cares so much about people. All he wants to do is like 
be nice to people, be open to people, be curious about people. And I really respect that about him. And he definitely had his game hat on, like, since day one. I, well, I don't know him day one. We met at the merge. But uh, he he's a student of the game for sure. He's, like, knows everything about it and, like, was thinking the game. But he, because of that, knew that the best way to win the game was perhaps through a social game. And I think that was his best strength. Like, there is times where I would be talking to him one-on-one -on -one and we... Sometimes today when we talk after the game, I still think he's lying to me. But he's like, dude, we were like number one. We were like Dom and Wendell. We were running this thing. And meanwhile, he's saying this to me on the island saying, hey, we're good. We're going final two. But I'm going to go right over there. I'm going to go talk to Janet. I'm going to go talk to Lauren. And don't be jealous. Don't like think of anything. I'm just going to go tell them that, hey, I'm talking to Dean. He's not really with me. I just like keeping him at bay. So meanwhile, he's telling me I'm final two telling me to my face, hey, I'm going to go talk to Lauren and Janet. Tell, I'm going to go tell them that I'm final two with them too, to my face, and say not to worry about it. And I think that's absolutely genius. And for some reason, myself, Nora, Lauren, Janet, Dan, probably like Elaine, like mad people actually believe this guy. And that is absolutely genius to me. And I think he deserved it for that reason. And going into Final Travel Council, I knew that... I was playing from behind, given like all my accolades and stuff at the end, I, I, I knew I could probably like spark some sort of excitement from the jury, but I knew I was playing from, from behind just because he had such close relationships with everyone. The winner of Survivor. <laughs> Teaching time with Tommy was a breath of fresh air after a slew of winners who seemingly were strongly assisted by advantages in the game. However, our next player embraced Modern Survivor with all of its quirks and twists and idle bombed his way to the end. He took what production has been doing since season three with out of nowhere twists and used it to help propel him to the end to win. I feel that Ben, Ben played a, um, he played a good game, you know, my season. He was, um, you know, I put a target on his back pretty early in the game. Um, you know, real recognized, real. The reason that I should be the sole survivor this year is because I was not put here. I got myself here. And I, I told everyone I was out here for my family and I am out here for my family. And I've talked about stuff that happened in the military. I came back with PTSD, a lot of combat vets do. And me being out here now is a message to all those men and women who are struggling that you don't have to feel alone. He's a great guy, he's a great player, and he never gives up. He approached it like not a game, but a mission, and he was playing so much harder than Almost everybody else out there, or probably everybody else out there. In Winners at War, I actually played with Ben, I think more than anyone else for the longest amount of time because I started with Ben and I ended with Ben. It was only New Soleil 2.0 that I wasn't with him. So I really saw him actually come into his own in this game. He started the game with a bit of a chip on his shoulder and a burden, I think, from his last win. So Ben coming into Survivor Winners at War was actually a close friend. I, I, I had spent some time with him outside of the game, and outside of the game, Ben is one of the nicest survivors you will ever meet. I mean, the guy has a heart of gold. Even to this day, I kick myself for just not realizing he would find idol after idol after idol. And if I didn't find it, I should have assumed he had it. I respect the individuals that make the moves, and I feel that Ben, uh, he was able to identify when he really was a threat, um, and really, you know, steps that you know stepped it up another notch, you know, fighting the idols and and playing the game that he wanted to play. I think he did a really, really good job of creating those deep connections where they knew he was going to be ride or die loyal, and they trusted him, and that really kept him safe. And I couldn't find that for myself, so I think he did a good job of. Um, piecing together each bit of his game. But Ben is, was an amazing player that it was clear from literally day one, you could tell if he was making it to the end he was taking. Ben is one of my favorite people to play with um, ever because 
like the trust was just there instantly um and it's like so refreshing in the game of survivor because you you can't trust anybody and you know you see how closely like tony and i work together and we knew each other and ben and i had met like one other time and we didn't talk at all um going into the season so but like the ease that ben gave me and the reassurance like that guy is loyal to a fault and um it was actually really refreshing and would calm like keep you calm and then i knew i could also be my like be myself so if i was upset about something i didn't have to like hide that from ben because he wouldn't perceive anything as a weakness or whatever you know and he would he would actually be my friend so i loved playing with ben um he would he would be someone that everyone would want to team up with if they ever played on a season with him the winner of survivor <laughs> While Ben Drebergen was greatly helped by a game-changing twist at Final Four, our next player from Classic Survivor was also greatly helped by a surprise game-changing twist at Final Four. I guess not much has changed. The Purple Rock Dry helped save her game and gave her another shot at winning it all. She won our hearts and it was a no-brainer when they brought her back for All Stars. Hey you guys, this is the way, I found the way. I did not want to go into this being the blonde, bitchy person at all, because I'm really not. The only time I do get assertive is when I see that a critical job isn't getting done. We were always thinking of bringing you along, babe. Always. Well, always to the very end. It was, it was, it was, he was, this was proud to bring you the final four. I'm sorry. It's brutal. It is. It's brutal. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Brutal. You know, I should have listened to you. No friends in this game. There's no denying that Kathy was, I mean, she was my, she was my partner in crime on All Stars. She was my, um, my best friend out there. She was my, you know, my ally. Um, and we worked together on virtually every single move we made out there. Um, and she was actually, you know, you, you always hope that when you, when you go out there and play that you're going to end up you know, in an alliance of people that you that you can work with and that respect you, but also that you really genuinely enjoy. And um, and she was all those things. She was an absolute delight to play with. Um, she kept me from going nuts a few times. You know, it's easy it's easy to, to to go to dark places when you're without your family and your friends. And she, you know, she kind of filled that that void for me for a while. But um, I honestly didn't think I could have asked for a better a better partner out in All Stars. She was. Um, you know, we worked really well together. We bounced ideas off each other, strategies off each other. She's wicked smart. Um, and it was just, it was, it was really, she was, if, if I could handpick a partner knowing what I know now, you know, back then, I would have still gone with Kathy because she was just, she was awesome to work with. And, you know, I mean, she's also, you know, it's always nice to have um, an alliance with somebody that's, that can really hold their own, their own in the game. And I mean, she's, you know, she, she was, she was, great at challenges she was smart she was you know easy for everyone to get along with and and i would argue that um you know she she's really the one she's the person who should have won survivor marquesas she was really i had i had all my money down on her and right up to that final three she was the one that i feel like was most deserving to win I mean, that could have been like peroxide as far as I'm concerned. I didn't even think of it being weird that she was squatting down and I had my hand between her legs. Let's say you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, do what it takes to make you feel good. I don't care what you have to do. Thank you. Finally, when I think I was pulling up my pants, I suddenly got very embarrassed. <laughs> but it made me feel good. At least I perform in the Call of Duty. While Kathy Vavrick O'Brien grew and got stronger as her season went on, our next player was already strong out of the gate. In his three seasons playing, he only went to Tribal Council twice in the pre-merge and won six individual immunities, showing just how dominant of a force he is when it comes to challenges. So in your opinion, who is the biggest challenge beast of all time? Joey Amazing. Joey Amazing. When you think Joe, you think challenge beast straight up yeah joey is literally the amazing
you know, I think if Joe had made it to the end in Cambodia and Jeremy wasn't there, I probably would have voted for him. Um, you know, because for him to beast out in whatever way and make it to the end, I think would be such an incredible accomplishment, whether it was through challenges, you know, through some strategy. I give Joe more strategic credit than I think most people give him. I think Joe, you know, in people's minds is a great challenge competitor. You know, he's got the, the hair, he's great at the outdoors. I also think Joe really knows his survivor strategy. Um, you know, I, when I was with him, I saw him constantly building alliances. You know, certainly early on in Bayon, he probably was in more alliances and sub-alliances than anybody else. Um, and, you know, he was always playing production. You know, he figured out when a tribe swap was going to happen before anybody else knew because of, like, the way that the producer's radios were configured. You know, so he was someone who was always thinking about the game. You know, he practices these challenges in his backyard. He's, you know, he really approaches the game as something that can be learned and mastered. And I think, you know, he's got a very savvy strategic sense. It's not just, you know, you know, the guy with long hair who goes out there and, you know, holds up the pole for five hours. I, I, I think you can absolutely make the argument that he is one of the greatest challenge beasts in Survivor history. Um, it, I mean, his record shows every time that he's played, he's made the merge because, you know, he's carried his starting and, and second tribe uh, on his shoulders to make it to the merge. He's Joey the Amazing. What can you say about him? I, from the people that I've played with, I mean, I would say that he's definitely the best challenge player. When it comes to the physical piece of the game, he is one of the best, hands down. I remember everybody getting frustrated because it was like, who's going to beat Joe? The crappy thing is the second Joe loses a challenge is normally the first time he, he'll go home. Everybody's just waiting for him to mess up, waiting for him to drop the ball, waiting for him to lose a challenge so we could vote him out because if he made it to the end, he definitely would win. Joe, undeniably, uh, there's three parts of the game. I'll play, I'll wit, I'll last and there's not no one that can deny that he's one of the best to ever outplay in a form of challenge beast. Let, let me show you what, what not only my weekend, but what I've been doing the past three months. So uh, we're in the Bahamas, you see the ocean in the background, and on the other side, that's the Sea of Abaco over there. Uh, this right here are the two houses that didn't make it through Dorian. That debris field is from the house next door. <laughs> and wow. uh, and uh, that's about the size, easily about two and a half school buses, maybe more. So, uh, yeah, all day. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> This is uh, the new part of our deck and stairs we're going to put in to go down because one of the dormers off of that cape that was there flew up in the air like Dorothy's house in Kansas and came down and smashed this. Um, Next time on the top 100 greatest survivors. We've added 10 more people to our top 100, half of which are winners and the other half have placed in the top five at least once, but didn't bring home the million dollars. If you are enjoying the top 100 greatest survivors, make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. Be sure to leave a comment below to let us know what you think of our countdown so far. Until next time, stay tuned and keep hope alive. Russell Hance, and this is the Russell Hance Show.